Hello everyone and welcome to Open Shores English. I'm Deanna. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry I'm one minute late, but I appreciate y'all being here. Um, give me a sec while I get some back end stuff situated. And as you may already know, we're covering a lesson on the British Council, always, I do love their free content, um, a lesson on the International Workers' Day coming up. So I just wanted to give our viewers a chance to see ways that we can use free resources. I mean, if you go to ecosia.org and look up free resources in English, there are a ton. So. I, I do suggest you choose your one favorite or a few favorites so that you don't have too many options. And um, I chose International Workers Day um, particularly because it's, it's coming up. And workers' rights and uh, environmental rights often go hand in hand. And I think that sustainability education might sometimes look like it's more focused on the, the physical Earth's well-being rather than the human well-being. But these, these really can't um, be separated from one another. And so um, it's all relevant, right? So again, thank you guys for watching and a little about me and um, Open Shores English. Uh, if you've never been here before, if you're new, um, my name's Deanna and I started Open Shores English exactly 11 months ago in at the very end of May last year. And with the aim of engaging non-native English speakers in the global conversation on sustainability and environmental issues. Why? Um, for, for the diversity, I suppose, for the, the possibility that we will find even greater solutions than the ones we're coming on now to issues that are being faced around the world. Um, if you've attended our free conversation courses, we just had one this week, um, you know why, to me, it's important to start these conversations. Um, when you mobilize the masses, when you give the masses the capacity to participate in, in actively problem solving, you come across large scale solutions. And again, the, the fact is that we're all facing these problems together. And a lot of these conversations are had at a higher level um, in government or non-governmental organizations, but internationally. And um, yeah, we, we could, we always need um, as many ideas as we can get, right? So um, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's not, um, it's not a huge challenge, what we're facing now, the in environmental crisis, the climate crisis, uh, the loss of biodiversity. But uh, together, I do believe there's a lot of potential. And yeah, that's what I hope to share with other people who want to engage in these conversations. So let's uh, move on to I'm going to try to share my screen here <laughs> to the International Workers Day. This is a magazine uh, article. And if this isn't your style, you can also check out the videos that they've got or just practice general vocabulary. But um, you'll see at the top, there are instructions for preparing, and we'll start with the vocabulary, and then read a bit about what International Workers' Day is. 
why people celebrate it and what it's intended to do. We see it's demanding fair pay and better working conditions. So if this is relevant to you where you live, tell us why. Um, tell us if your country celebrates these holidays. We'll see how it all got started. And yeah, let's get into it. So here's the vocabulary. We have sick pay, solidarity, a wage, redundancy pay, a pension, a trade union, to campaign, and to go on strike. So if any are absolutely new, I suggest starting with the ones you know. Give yourself um, a way to feel good at the start. <laughs> so to organize and work together to achieve a goal. Solidarity, the, mon the money you receive when you are ill and unable to work. If you are ill, you are sick. The money you receive when you lose your job because you are not needed anymore. Redundancy pay, support for an agreement with other people. I'm going to say that one, solidarity. To refuse to work as a way of protesting about pay or working conditions. To go on strike. An organization of workers that protect workers' rights. A trade union. A particular amount of money that is paid to a worker per hour week or month. That's your wage, an amount of money that is paid to a person by the government, a pension. So why did I say solidarity here? If solidarity is a noun and to campaign is a verb? Good question. Let's see if we got them right. Okay, if you didn't, they'll let you know and you get to try again, but it's pretty straightforward. Hey guys, sorry for the technical issues. We're gonna have to go into recording mode. Thanks for attending the live for those of you who are there and check out the rest of the lesson here. We are back on the British Council's Learn English page for International Workers Day. And we've just finished the preparation material, which was matching words to their definitions. And in case you missed it in the live, I did in fact make a mistake. Here's a little trick for recognizing verbs they often will put the infinitive to organize or to refuse so you know that it matches with to go on strike or to campaign in this case. So let's put this vocabulary to work. Why do we need International Workers Day? International Workers Day is a celebration of working people and a day when people campaign for decent work and fair pay. Thanks to action taken by workers over many years, millions of people have won fundamental rights and protections. Minimum wages have been established, there are limits on working hours, and people have the right to pay paid holidays and sick pay. However, in recent years, working conditions in many situations have got worse. Since the global financial crisis of 2008, part-time, short-time, and badly paid work has become more common, and state pensions are at risk. We've also seen the rise of the gig economy, where companies hire workers casually for one short job at a time. 
These workers don't have the usual rights to paid holidays, the minimum wage, or redundancy pay. Solidarity with other workers is as important as ever. So let's remember, solidarity, support for an agreement with other people. How do we achieve this? By organizing trade unions, for example, and in some cases going on strike and refusing to work. Which brings us to the history of International Workers' Day. In May 1886, 400,000 workers in many parts of the USA went on strike, demanding an eight-hour workday. The strike started peacefully, but on the third day of protests in Chicago, there was some, some violence. The police shot at unarmed workers, killing several of them. The next day, there were more protests and someone threw a bomb. Seven police officers and four workers were killed by the bomb or police shootings just after the bomb. The person who threw the bomb was never identified, but eight workers were arrested. Seven of them were sentenced to death, and one of them was sent to a prison for 15 years. This event, known as the Haymarket Affair, was very important in bringing working people together in the USA. Many people didn't believe the men were guilty, and the trial was criticized for being unfair. The Haymarket Affair became an international symbol of the struggle for workers' rights, and May 1st was chosen to be International Workers' Day. On this day, socialist parties and trade unions called for workers to de demonstrate for the eight-hour workday, the eight-hour day, and in favor of peaceful protest. The eight-hour working day became law for public workers in 1892 in the USA. Since then, workers' movements all over the world have continued to fight for and win this right. So you guys can see how this is celebrated in other countries, or tell us how it's celebrated in con other countries. If you're not in the USA, what do people where you live do to observe this holiday? So let's see here. Are these true or false? Nowadays, a lot of people have basic protection and rights where they work because workers took action in the past. True. Since 2008, working conditions have been much better for a lot of workers. False. Why? Well, let's go back. The gig economy. State pensions are at risk. In May 1886, many workers in the USA decided to take action because they thought they were working too many hours. True. The Haymarket Affair did not have the effect of dividing working people. It brought them together. An eight-hour working day has continued to be an important condition for workers. True. Most people around the world celebrate Workers' Day in the same way. False. Let's see. You guys can do task number two on your own. But the reason that I've gone through this magazine article and shown you guys a little about um, the British Council's website, for example, is to just show one place where you can engage more with English resources. There are tons of resources online. If you're willing to put in the time to study, and if you want to engage in these conversations, Open Shores English is here to support you. It's super easy if you have a question, just to send a quick message. Hey, this is confusing, and um, we can answer. I can answer. I'm, I'm here to be of, of service to the people who care about having conversations, particularly related to the environmental crisis, but also social injustice, um, 
whatever you find relevant I'd love to be a part of um, your your curiosity your growing knowledge base and I myself am also a student I wanted to tell you guys I don't go on Spanish sites um, well to read the news sometimes I do but I personally like a fictional story I like um, I like historical fiction particularly and so I have this book by Elena Castedo um, it's old I don't know I found it and uh, it was two euro and for the words that I don't know I have a notebook and admittedly keeping track of all the words you don't know can be overwhelming but if you want to break down these lists and say okay I've, I've got this long list of words but I want to start using a certain few that, that are relevant or that you think are worth prioritizing you can start the day with 10 words in mind and say I'm going to remind myself a few times during the day what these words were or I'm going to try to form sentences with them but simply engaging with the language and, and remembering consciously throughout the day or throughout your week making a habit of bringing language learning into your life is going to help you keep track of your goals in a different way L learning a language isn't going to take a month it it's for some people a, a lifelong journey right I mean I don't speak perfect English <laughs> But I'm a native English speaker. I mean, we make mistakes and, and we learn how to use language as a tool, right? So again, um, if you guys have questions, I am here. Forgive me for the, the live today, <laughs> but thanks for watching and see you soon.